Okay, we've, I think we've let a, a few people join after, just after the hour. So hello everyone, thank you so much for being here today. I'm Lainey titus I'm the Director of Government Relations here at the National Brain Tumor Society. We are as committed as ever to the brain tumor community and will continue to make a difference together. I have just a few housekeeping items for the webinar. We will be recording this webinar for those who can't join us today. We'll also be muting the line to avoid background noise in the call, but we do want to be able to take your questions. So if you do have any questions, we'll respond to them through the chat feature of Ring Central. We'll send a message now so you can find that chat box. Uh, once the message is sent, it should pop up that there's a new chat. Um, and feel free to ask questions at any time and we'll address them either during that part of the training or at the end of the presentation. Okay, great. Um, so first, I'd like to introduce you to our team who is here with us on the call today. We're all honored to work with you to meet the names, needs of the brain tumor community and um, look forward to continuing to work with you over these coming months. So again, welcome and thanks for joining us to learn more about Head to the Hill 2020 and the virtual day of action. We acknowledge that we're all impacted by the current state of the world and your commitment to this cause doesn't go unrecognized. While we have activities leading up to our day of action that we'll discuss on the webinar, the day that we'll all advocate with our members of Congress will be on Monday, May 4th. So next, we just want to let you know how grateful we are for you. Uh, we know there's a lot going on right now, and we thank you for taking your time to join us to learn more about this year's event. We also do want to recognize before diving into the details um, that we are, of course, all disappointed that we won't be joining together in DC. Uh, for some of you, this would have been your ninth year attending the event. For others, you were looking forward to your first head to the hill, maybe the first time you were finally able to make it, um, and looking forward to meeting other members of the brain tumor community. So we know, and we know that whatever we include in a virtual event doesn't take the place of the hugs we would have given or the new friendships we would have made. But when crafting this virtual event, we really try to include some of those high points of Head to the Hill, including the chance to connect with each other during the event. We can still have an impact on public policies that affect the brain tumor community this year. And then next year's chance to join together in person, share those hugs and meet new advocates will be that much more meaningful for all of us. So as we transition to discussing the virtual event, we wanna set the scene of what is happening in Congress and why we can still make a difference. So like many of us, Congress has had to adapt their way of life and work these past few weeks and how that all happens. So members of Congress for the most part are back home in their districts and they're not on Capitol Hill and staff members are predominantly working from home. What we've found is that all offices are working virtually, but they're all working differently. So there's no uniform system to how congressional offices are dealing with this new process of work. Because of this, Congress is relying and preferring written and digital means of communication in place of meetings and phone calls. So what is Congress doing uh, right now? So as you've heard in the news, they've been working on legislation and stimulus packages related to COVID-19. So far, they've passed three of those bills and there's a fourth one in the works. However, even with all of these changes and adjustments and the focus on COVID-19 legislation, the appropriation process does continue to move forward. We've had, heard from appropriators, the members of Congress who determine federal funding each year that they want to hear about us about our prior about our priorities for this year. So let's talk about how they're going to hear from us. So on uh, Monday, May 4th, you get a chance to store, share your story in detail via our digital platform. That's gonna be our call to action. We'll also have a strong component around social media engagement to get more people to take action, including our members of Congress, and to have a greater impact. We have a goal this year of 3,000 emails to Capitol Hill. So um, even though we're not getting together, we normally have about 350 people at Head to the Hill. This year we're trying to get 3,000 3, emails and messages sent to Capitol Hill. That will increase our impact, um, increase our ability to get our message across to our members of Congress. We're also having a goal of having someone from every state participate in Head to the Hill, so all 50 states. What that will mean is that every US Senator will hear from the brain tumor community on May 4th, which would of course be um, a big impact. And then also many members of the House of Representatives would also have a constituent reaching out to them as well. 
And finally, we're going to talk a little bit further about continuous engagement and how Head to the Hill will stretch beyond just May 4th. So let's talk a little bit about um, digital advocacy because I know some of you have attended Head to the Hill and know what an impact that in-person meeting can have and you see it um, as you're sitting there. But there's also data that shows that digital advocacy is just as important and influential. A study by the Congressional Management Foundation found that 76% of congressional staff believe that the ability to engage with constituents on social media allows for more meaningful interaction with those constituents. There's also a report in the National Journal that says that 87% of congressional staff said that one of the most powerful influences is groups of constituents sharing targeted messages for a specific cause. That's exactly what we intend to do on May 4th. And uh, so we know that congressional staff overwhelmingly says that that has an impact. We'll have a large volume of advocates sharing the same message over and over, but with personalized stories, which we know is also very impactful. And finally, we know that digital advocacy is effective, especially right now, because that is what Capitol Hill wants us to be doing. We're choosing to engage with them dig digitally because we're being responsive to their needs and requests. So we talked about continuous engagement and he uh, with Head to the Hill. Um, normally Head to the Hill is a pretty intense uh, three days spent together. But this year we need to think of Head to the Hill as a marathon, not as a sprint. So instead of those three intense days, we need to really think of this as a campaign, campaign that's going to work all the way from May um, through to September. So what we'll be doing is we'll be having our virtual event on May 4th. We'll be taking action and engaging on social media. Then throughout June and July, we can send thank you messages to our members of Congress for listening to our concerns. And we'll be scheduling meetings and, at, and telling you how to schedule meetings with your members of Congress back home in your districts in August. Now what happens in August is Congress is not in session in Washington DC, so everyone returns back home um, and they tend to take meetings with their, with their constituents at home in their district offices at that time. So the trainings we'll be providing that we'll talk about soon, um, those can help you for preparing for those meetings, scheduling those meetings. And then in August, you can hopefully have those meetings as long as everything is, is back to having in-person meetings at that time. Um, and then at, just as important as having the meetings is the follow-up. So we'll be working with you in September to do thank you emails for those August recess meetings. And once again, advocating for our asks. So everyone that's attended Head to the Hill before knows that training is so important and such a big part of what we do at Head to the Hill. And training is still important for our virtual event. So we have all the tools you'll need to carry out each aspect of that campaign. Um, we'll make sure you're aware of the policy issues, why the brain tumor community needs Congress to act, as well as how to effectively convey your story to those policy asks, much as we do in the day-to-day, -day, the um, in-person training at Head to the Hill. We'll provide you with digital meeting materials, which will be backup documents that will be in addition to the training that you can refer back to as you prepare for the event. We'll also be sending t-shirts to all participants registered by April 15th. So if you're on the call and you haven't yet registered for Head to the Hill, please make sure to do so within the next week so we can get a t-shirt to you. Um, it will be cool if we can all have those t-shirts um, ready to go for, uh, for May 4th. So during the trainings, we'll dive deeper into the basics of advocacy and the importance of sharing your story, but we want to touch briefly on that here. Um, three key, there are three key pieces to any type of advocacy interaction, whether it's an in-person meeting or via email or phone call or social media, and that is to have a local connection, um, which you will all have because you'll be reaching out to your members of Congress who are from your state or your local district. You'll have a personal story, which again, we, we let you know will help you craft that, um, to let them know exactly what it is um, that you're talking about and why uh, we need these policy changes we're asking for and how that affects the brain tumor community. And finally, what the policy ask is, uh, what we'd like them to change to improve things for the brain tumor community. So again, that local connection is so important so that the members of Congress realize there's someone right in your area who is affected by these issues. This is not just a piece of legislation or um, some appropriations funding. This is something that affects real people in your district. 
you are also a valuable resource for members of Congress. Um, some of them may have not had experience with someone with a brain tumor or a family member of someone with a brain tumor. Unfortunately for all of us, we're all experts on what it is to have a brain tumor and have that experience. And we can share that with members of Congress to help influence their decisions on important legislation or appropriations decisions that will affect the brain tumor community. Also, it helps you make a personal and emotional connection with the member of Congress or their staff. There are so many um, emails that staff receive in person meetings when they're on Capitol Hill. Um, we need something to sort of rise above the noise of that and make sure that our priorities rise to the top of their pile. Um, and making that personal and emotional connection with them really helps to do that. And finally, you'll be able to create positive change for the brain tumor community to work to change those policies so we can find better treatments and a cure for brain tumors. So again, this will be a little different this year for those who have attended Head to the Hill in the past because we're normally talking about a verbal story and how to relay that. Um, but this year we'll be working on a written story and we will provide training to help you um, craft that story. Uh, we do realize it can be difficult and awkward to take such a big life-changing experience and narrow it down into a really concise, uh, impactful story. Um, that's what our training will talk about. Um, but we, you know, it really is important, as I said before, or those members of Congress and their staff have lots of um, competing priorities. They have limited time sometimes. So really making sure it's short and to the point is going to be very impactful and, and make sure it's, it's read and evaluated by those members of Congress. So um, it will be about a six to eight sentence story or so. And we'll give you that training as, long, as well as practice templates that will give you the prompts that our online system will give you on the day of action so that you can be prepared for what, you, what the answers to the questions will be and how that email will be crafted. And finally, we'll help you learn how to relate it to the policy issues um, that we'll be discussing. So again, um, a few opportunities to share your story throughout the Head to the Hill event. Um, we will have a social media campaign that I'll talk about momentarily on uh, leading up to May 4th, where you can share your story with others about why it's important for you to head to the Hill. As I mentioned, we'll also um, give you ways to practice during the training to tell your story. And finally, your experience will be included in your personalized message to your members of Congress. So uh, for those Head to the Hill veterans, you'll always ask, what is the ask this year? What are we asking for? Um, of course, we are monitoring different pieces of legislation just to see if there's anything we need to add to this. Um, but right now, we know that the focus is on appropriations and that appropriators want to hear from us. So we'll be talking about increasing medical research funding. Congress can appropriate funding for medical research, so we'll be asking for that funding through a variety of areas listed here. In your training, you'll get a deeper understanding of each of these areas of funding and how they individually impact brain tumor research. As I said before, research funding is absolutely critical to finding new effective treatments and ultimately a cure for brain tumors. So before Head to the Hill, um, online trainings for the event will be launched on April 26th. Um, we'll also be conducting a social media campaign, Why I Head to the Hill? and we'll have a live kickoff event for all participants to get ready and excited for our day of action. And that kickoff will be on Sunday, May 3rd at 3 p.m. And then I'll just go into a little more, de more detail about each of these. So we have um, a training platform that is called Litmos. Um, you'll receive an email leading up to April 26th that will include everything you need to participate in these online trainings. It will have a link to the login page, a username, and instructions for you to create your own password. This here is what that login screen will look like. Um, you'll be able to put your username and password and then it's uh, fairly to just log in and this is the screen you'll access as you can see there's a menu at the top um, but predominantly what you're going to be looking at uh, where this arrow just popped up this is where all of the different trainings will be um, you can see all of them under the all tab um, you can also see which ones are in progress the good thing about these trainings are um, we understand everyone uh, has different levels of commitments right now, especially with everything being a little bit different. So you don't have to take them all at once. You can start them and come back later. Um, you can decide to do uh, 
one or two a day for the week leading up to head to the hill, whatever works for you and your schedule. Um, but you can see on here which ones you've already started, which ones you haven't started yet, and which ones you've completed. Just to note, there is something that says overdue that won't apply here um, for these trainings, but everything else is, should be pretty self-explanatory once you log on and, and take a look at Litmos. Okay, so our social media campaign leading up to Head to the Hill is called Why Do You Head to the Hill? Um, and so this is where uh, we can inspire participation and ask others to join us on our day of action on May 4th. This goes back to those 50 states and those 3,000 emails. We want to get people across our community, across the country, excited to engage with their members of Congress and get them to participate on May 4th. So we're asking, we'll be sharing a link to this information, but we'll be asking everyone, if you can, to share why you head to the Hill. And you can do that either in writing with photos, or you can choose to record a short video. Um, and you can either upload that directly to social media, or you can share it directly with NBTS, and we'll get it on social media for you. Like I said, we'll be sending a link to this, so all of the steps for doing that will be included on in that information. So again, the live kickoff, we, we hope you'll all join us on Sunday, May 3rd, and this will be a, via video to prepare for our day of action. And this dial information, dial in information will be emailed to all registered Head to the Hill attendants. So um, again, if you're on the call and you haven't yet registered for Head to the Hill, please do so, so you make sure you can get all of these, um, these logins for the trainings as well as the live kickoff event. So then we'll get to our day of action on Monday, May 4th. Um, so we did, I know that anyone that attends Head to the Hill, you're used to going to Capitol Hill on Tuesday, May 5th. Um, this year, we've heard there's an effort by uh, the folks that organize Giving Tuesday. That's normally something that happens the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. I'm sure you're all aware. Um, you see it on social media. There's lots of fundraising activity um, with everything going on um, with COVID-19 and um, people not being able to join together for events. There's an effort to have another Giving Tuesday called Giving Tuesday Now on Tuesday, May 5th. So we decided, um, you know, when we're in person in DC, it makes sense to go on Tuesday because members of Congress sometimes don't fly in until Tuesdays. Um, but since we're not going to be there uh, physically, it's fine to do our advocating on Monday. So therefore, to not compete with, um, with all of that activity on social media on Tuesday, we'll do our day of action on Monday, May 4th. Again, we'll have social media activity throughout the day, and we ask you to keep posted on our social media channels and share what we share with you. Um, again, that call to action through the online tool, a way to share your story and what you've been practicing um, through the storytelling training, that's what you're gonna put to use and send to your members of Congress on that Tuesday. Also, we're going to be doing state video meetings throughout the day. So this is one of the ways we've thought of to have you all connect. And again, for those of you getting a t-shirt, it would be great if everyone has their t-shirts on for these video calls. Um, for larger states, we'll probably just have your state on the video meeting. For some of the smaller states, we'll probably pair you up with a few other states to have a few more of you on the call. But we'll check in on how things are going. We'll look at how many actions have been taken across the country as well as in your state or region. Um, and then just you know, motivate and, and talk to each other about how we can get other people to take action that day. And finally, at the end of the day, we're gonna have a wrap up meeting with everyone who's attending and participating in Head to the Hill, where we can all join together on video to celebrate the amount of action that's happened and also to talk about our next steps going forward. Um, just to mention for, you know, again, for those who have attended Head to the Hill in, past, in the past, Race for Hope DC is usually such a big part of those few days for many of our advocates. So normally Race for Hope DC is a large um, race that we host um, on Sunday, May 3rd. It's normally in the morning, but it's moving to a virtual platform for 2020, like so many other events. Um, it's going to look a bit different this year, but we're committed to delivering the same spirit of the event that you know and love. So uh, we will have a Facebook Live video program that will e air on May 3rd. It will begin at um, 12 p.m., but there also will be a virtual Wall of Hope slideshow that will kick off beginning at 10 a.m. Um, so there'll be check-ins with some of the Race for Hope teams, honoring survivors, um, providing a research update, and sharing inspiring stories from Race for Hope. So um, 
please, if you can, you can register for Race for Hope and then you'll get a link directly uh, to your email or you can just join in Facebook Live on Sunday, May 3rd. Again, that is the same day of our uh, live kickoff, which is at 3 p.m. So this would be at 12 p.m. and our live kickoff would be at 3 p.m. So how can you be ready for Head to the Hill? First of all, if you're on the call and you haven't registered, please register. Um, so we'll send a follow-up email to all of you with a link to register. So make sure you're on that list so you can participate in these trainings with us in our kickoff events, in our video meetings, and to take action and share your story with your member of Congress. Also check your emails. Um, there is a, a fair amount of information we'll be sending out. Um, we'll be sending it to the email that you registered uh, for Head to the Hill with. So make sure to check that inbox. Make sure you're getting our messages. Um, we also will send you an opportunity to opt into text messaging messages. For some of you, um, I know it might be a little easier to get a text message than have an email sent um, because inbox can fill up sometimes. So if that's easier for you, we ask you to please opt into text messages and we can communicate with you that way as well. And then um, once you're checking those emails, complete those trainings prior to May 4th so that you're ready and you feel able to prepare your story and advocate with your members of Congress. Uh, again, there will also be social media training so you can be um, well armed with the information you need for our day of action. And finally, join that live kickoff event that we'll have on May 3rd. And here is my, um, my name again and my email address. If at any time you have questions leading up to Head to the Hill, um, besides the questions we're, we'll go through now, please um, go ahead and email me at any time and we can get you those answers to those questions. Um, so think, now I'll go to Lisa. If Lisa, you wanna unmute and let us know uh, what questions we've gotten. Hi, Lainey. Thank you for doing such a great job of um, explaining everything and um, understanding our new format this year. I'm really excited about it. Um, we have two questions. Um, the first one is from Rena, and she says, um, would recorded videos be appropriate for the written story? My daughter is a survivor, 14 years old now, and I was so looking forward to the in-person head to the hill. That's a great question. Um, so I think part of the why do I head to the hill could definitely be um, a recorded video, like we said, and you could we'll be able to um, provide you with some information on how to look up your members of Congress and their Twitter handles, Facebook, um, Facebook accounts, all of that. So you could share that why do I head to the hill directly with your members of Congress through their social media channels. Um, and I think that would be a great way to do that. Great. Um, and Rena, if you still have more questions about that, just send it in the chat. Um, then the other question also was uh, another, another great question. Will, um, will the advocates be trained, this is from Lisa, will the advocates be trained on how to share via social media? Yes, we'll have a whole social media training. Um, one of the trainings that we'll do is on social media. So we'll provide a lot more information there on steps you can take, suggested messaging. Um, we'll also have a separate document that you can keep with you um, so you don't have to go back into the actual training and you can refer to that. That will have any hashtags you need, suggested messages and tips for uh, engaging on social media that day. So we have a question about what about expatriates my little brother lives in Vietnam. I think HR Long is interested in how they can participate. Sure, so um, I guess if, if they're still a citizen that votes um, and they have an address that's their voting address, I know that they may not, um, they might not have that address. So um, if they don't have an address that they could put in to register for, which would help us um, figure out which members of Congress to direct their email to, um, you can reach out to me and we can kind of figure out what the best strategy is there. Great. So it looks like we are getting to the end of our questions. If anybody wants to ask something, we're, we're open for the last couple minutes here. Now's the time. Mm -hmm.
Okay, well, I'll, I'll go to the next slide. It's just the thank you slide. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to attend this webinar. Again, we know that um, these are, are difficult times and everyone has some competing interests. So we really appreciate your willingness to take action, um, to spend time with us today and to commit to uh, making a difference for the brain tumor community on May 4th and in the uh, months following. So um, again, we look forward to working with you. If there's any more questions, I'll take them now. Otherwise, you'll be hearing from us uh, shortly via email. Well, lucky you. We do have some more questions. <laughs> okay. That's good. I had a chance. Someone we'll is wondering time. if you have a green card that you are you able to um, participate? Um, yes, because you have an address. So yep, you can absolutely just um, register with wherever you live in the U.S. and, um, and you can definitely do that. Great. And another question was, how many states do we currently have represented? Do you know that? um, that's a great question. I haven't looked. Um, I, know. If, if there's <laughs> question, I, I haven't looked um, since yesterday. I think we were somewhere in the in the 36 range. Um, I do know we got some additional um, additional people um, registering in the past day. But what we'll be doing is if you can keep posted on our social media channels, and maybe we can even do this in one of the emails to you, we'll send um, a map that shows what states are still lacking, what states we don't have um, people registered from. We'd love your help. If you know anyone in those states, please share this information with them. One of the really great things about Head to the Hill this year is no one needs to take time off work to attend. They don't have to spend money to get on a plane and stay in a hotel um, to come to Head to the Hill. So it is a little more accessible for people. So um, hopefully we can get more participation from some of those states that are a little tougher to travel to DC. That's great. Um, we have another question about when we follow up with our members of Congress later in, in the year, in July and August and September, what are we thanking them for? There was some reference to thanking them. Yeah, we're so we're just um, thanking them for um, for listening to our concerns and then also just, you know, re um, letting them know again what we'd really want through the appropriations process. Um, and then we'll also be just asking for those meetings. So just sort of an acknowledgement. Thank you for, you know, taking the time to review our requests back in May. Here they are again. And then um, can we have a meeting. And again, we will be sending um, tips on how to do that and we'll be sending uh, ways for you to do that with, with suggested messaging. I just got a lot of uh, thank yous, so that's good okay. to hear. We appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. I appreciate all these questions too. You guys were doing some good listening with some good thoughts. And I'll go back to, um, to this slide here. So again, um, if anyone still has questions now that we'll be wrapping up the webinar, please feel free to email me and we can correspond um, and answer those questions that way. Okay. All right, I have another question. Oh, Amy. okay. <laughs> One is more. MBA, is MB, just what we thought we were done. Is, MBA, is MBTS still doing proclamations for Brain Tumor Awareness Month? May. Yes. Um, yes. So we did, we had an overwhelming response this year um, of advocates who are interested in, in signing up to recognize May as Brain Tumor Awareness Month in their state. We have at the moment um, 46 states who have said that they, um, someone in their state will request from their governor to recognize May as Brain Tumor Awareness Month. Um, that was fantastic. And we're also working with the other four states, advocates in those four states to make that happen. The only slight problem there is um, right now we are running into a few of the states who have said that they're not going to be um, giving out proclamations right now because they may be in a state of emergency. They may have staff who's not, um, not there in the office to take care of these things. So we're taking that case by case um, and we'll do what we can to, to secure as many of those proclamations as we can. We also have a question of, from Holly and she's um, asking about May 17th 
Brain Tumor Awareness Day, and I think that mm -hmm. um, might be um, is being confused with the DIPG Awareness Day. Do you want to clarify that? Sure. Yeah. Um, so there's an effort by um, by those affected by the DIPG, um, the Ch Pediatric Brain Tumor DIPG, um, to have May 17th recognized as um, brain as sorry DIPG Awareness Day. Um, we've been supporters of that resolution on the federal level, and I know there's an effort um, across the country to get those resolutions passed at the state level. So um, we do have a week action if you'd like to support um, recognizing May 17th as DIPG Awareness Day through the federal government, um, and I'm happy to share that link in one of our follow-up emails. Um, but the individual state ones, we're not working directly with the states on that. I think that's an effort um, by others in the community to get those state resolutions. And also just one more mention, I know those of you who have attended in the past, um, you've attended the CERN butterfly release, which is always a really wonderful aspect of Head to the Hill. So we're working with them closely um, to find out ways that we can still all stay involved with each other and, and what we can do to recognize um, the CERN awareness day, ependymoma awareness day that CERN recognizes as part of Head to the Hill. And again, the DIPG Awareness Day, uh, working with them uh, closely just to make sure that um, we're doing everything we can to recognize that day. And also um, just we do head the policy committee for the Alliance for Childhood Cancer, so work closely uh, with members of that community as well. Well, I think we have reached the end of our questions. Okay, great. All right. Um, so unless anyone has anything else, we will wrap up the webinar. As I said, we will be sending a recording um, to, to everyone and um, to those who couldn't make it. And we look forward to working with you in the coming weeks and months. Thank you so much. <laughs>